Hey everybody, welcome back. So you know that on this channel, we've done a lot of videos on using machine learning and data science techniques to buy and sell stocks. Now I wanna push that further into the finance world and start using those strategies on what are called options. But to do that, we first need to have a good foundational understanding of what options are. And this video, we're gonna start with the most basic of those, call options. So the story starts like this, and by the way, all the dollar amounts you're gonna see today are real dollar amounts from today, so all this is grounded in reality. So today, Tesla stock is $176. If I wanna buy a share, I'm gonna pay $176. Let's say, let's say that I think in the future, the value of the stock is going to go up. And what I wanna do today, based on my belief, is that I wanna lock in a low price to buy Tesla stock in the future. So in the language of options, I want the option to buy Tesla stock for cheap at some point in the future. And so what I do is I buy a call option and the entirety of what a call option is is explained in the green text at the bottom of this page. So I'm going to buy the right, but not the obligation. So this part is very important. I'm gonna buy the right, but not the obligation to purchase Tesla stock in the next six months for $200. So that by itself doesn't seem like a lot of text, but there is kind of a lot going on. So let's unpack the key components here. I'm going to be buying basically a contract. A call option is a contract which says, hey, I am right now buying the right, the option to buy Tesla stock within the next six months. So this is another key component within the next six months. And the price at which I'm going to be able to buy that Tesla stock is going to be $200. So just some nuances, that means that after the six month period, this option expires and I no longer have the right to do this. And the 200 is fixed, which means that if I'm going to exercise this option, again, I don't have to because I have the right, but not the obligation. If I'm going to exercise this option in that six month period, then I'm able to buy Tesla stock at exactly that $200 price point. And now I don't get this option for free. I don't just get the ability, the right to do this for free. I need to pay something today in order to secure that right. And so I pay $18 today in order to secure this right. Again, these are all real numbers for today for Tesla stock. And before we can start unpacking what this actually means and in which cases would I make money and lose money under this contract, just a couple of terms for you based on everything we've written down here. So this six months later, this is the expiration date of the call option. This $200 is called the strike price of the call option. And this $18 is called the premium I pay in order to secure that call option. So in a nutshell, that's all an option is folks. It's just a contract that says I am buying the right to buy a certain asset, in this case, Tesla stock, for a certain amount of money within a certain amount of time. And now what I wanna do is think about, okay, we kind of fundamentally understand what an option is, but how do we start thinking about how I actually make or lose money by securing this option? And to do that, we're gonna be filling out this graph together. On the x-axis, we have the price of Tesla stock at some point in the future. And on the y-axis, we have the gain or the loss in dollars that we would make from buying this call option. So we have here labeled the strike price at $200. So let's run through a couple of different scenarios. Let's say that the price of Tesla stock is over here at $182. Now, naively, what you might think and what I thought before I started studying these things was, hey, today's Tesla stock is 176. The price went up to 182. Surely I would have made money, right? But that's one of the key ways how buying a call option is very different from buying the underlying asset itself. And we're gonna get more into that on the second page a little bit later. But let's run through the logic here. So let's say Tesla stock does go up to $182. Now, would I exercise my option? Well, the answer is no, because if I exercised my option, then I would have to buy Tesla stock for $200, but I could just buy it on the open market right now for a lot cheaper at $182, which means that it's in my advantage to not exercise the option if the price is $182. And in that case, what's my gain or loss? Well, you might think it's zero because I haven't done anything, but really I had to pay for that call option in the first place. So I'm out $18 in this situation. So if the price of Tesla stock is at $182, then I'm actually at negative $18. This is a loss for me. Now, let's say the price of Tesla stock is at exactly $200, the strike price. 
again, I might think, okay, well, it kind of seems like I broke even. I said that I'm gonna buy it for 200, the fair market price is 200, I broke even, right? Well, again, in this case, you can choose to exercise the option or not exercise the option, it doesn't really matter, because the fair market value is the same as the price you locked in when you bought the call option. But again, you've paid $18 to secure that option in the first place, and that is a cost that's just gone. So again, in this case, you have lost $18. And now this is where the story starts to get more interesting. Let's say that the price of Tesla stock rises and rises and rises. Let's say it's $218. Now, let's say I go ahead and exercise the option. That means that I'm able to buy that Tesla stock for $200, even though the fair market value of that stock is $218, which means I can go ahead and exercise my option, secure Tesla stock for 200, go ahead and sell it for the fair market value of 218, and I pocket $18. But again, we need to remember that we paid $18 in the first place to secure that option. And so actually on the net, I'm at zero. So this is gonna be zero right here if the price is $218. And now the story gets more and more in our favor. So let's say the price of Tesla stock rises to $236. I would go ahead and exercise my option and buy that for 200 and it could go ahead and just sell that on the free market for 236, which means I get a $36 gain. Again, I need to factor in the $18 I paid. And so if the price of Tesla stock is 236, then I actually make an $18 gain. Same story if the price is 254, then I go ahead and make a $36 gain. So let's go ahead and connect all of these dots. So we're gonna go ahead and connect these dots to draw the plot of what my profit actually looks like when I buy this call option. So this is one part of the graph and the other part is just flat and looks like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this holistically and better understand what's going on. There's basically three regions of this graph to talk about. If the price of the stock is below the strike price, it makes absolutely no sense for me to exercise my option because if I really wanted to buy the stock, I could buy it for cheaper on the free market. And again, I have the right but not the obligation to exercise this option, so I'm just gonna choose not to exercise that call option. But in that case, I am out the $18 I initially paid. And so that's why it's just flat for anything below $200. Now in this region between $200 and $218, we see that my loss is getting less and less negative, but it's still negative. Because what's going on in that region is basically that I will exercise my option. If the price of the stock is let's say $205, then I'll exercise my option because if I don't, I'm gonna be out $18. But if I do exercise my option, then I'll buy it for 200, I'll sell it off for 205, I'll make that $5 profit, but then I have to factor in that I paid more than $5 to initially secure that option, which means I'm still in the negative, but it's better to do that than just not exercising the option at all. And now once we get past $218, I'm actually just in the positive because past there, the additional return I'm getting by buying the stock for cheap and selling it for more expensive on the free market is more than the price I paid to secure that option in the first place and this just kind of goes up. So when I first looked at this graph, it just looked really nice. Well, my loss is limited to $18. I can't lose anything more than $18. There's a floor there, but my gain seems unbounded. It can just grow kind of however much it wants to if the price just gets higher and higher and higher for Tesla stock in the future. And so based on that, it seemed really confusing to me why people were talking about options being really risky and that you need to understand everything about them and that you can actually lose or gain a lot of money. That whole part of the story didn't make a lot of sense to me. And so what I wanna do next is talk about the pros and cons, the risks versus rewards of buying an option for Tesla stock versus just doing the more simple thing that we talk about all the time, which is just buying one share of Tesla stock itself and letting that asset appreciate or depreciate in value. So what are the pros and cons of buying a call option versus just buying the underlying asset itself and why do people consider options trading so risky? That is what I wanna get into to close this video out. So how does a call option compare to just doing the simple thing and buying the underlying stock? So let's first look at the left-hand panel here. So first we're gonna look at the call option. So let's say that the price of Tesla stock when I go ahead and exercise my option is going to be P. So the gain when I exercise my call option is gonna be P minus 200. So I'm gonna pay 200 as I agreed upon when I bought the call option in the first place. But the value I'm gonna get from the stock is gonna be P. So for example, if P is $250, then I'm getting a $50 gain here because I'm buying a $250 asset for just 
And the cost is this $18 that I had to pay to secure the asset in the first place. So the net return I get is going to be the gain, and then we have to factor in the cost, so it's gonna be P minus 218. And the return on investment is gonna be that P minus 218 divided by how much I paid into this whole process, and that's gonna be the $18 that I paid to secure the option in the first place. What is the return on investment from just buying the stock and selling the stock at some point in the future when the price of the stock is P? Well, my return is a lot simpler to work out in this situation because it's just the value of the stock later minus how much I paid to buy the stock in the first place, which as we said on the previous page was $176. That was the price of Tesla stock. And so it's gonna be P minus 176. And my return on investment is going to be that P minus 176, which is how much money I made or lost, divided by how much I paid, which is gonna be 176. So again, the return on investment from the call option is P minus 218 over 18. And the return on investment from just buying and selling the stock is gonna be P minus 176 divided by 176. And so to understand why people talk about options being so risky, we're going to plot both of these returns on investment on this graph here. This graph here looks very similar to the last graph we were looking at. The x-axis is actually the exact same. It's just gonna be the price of Tesla stock, that P that we were talking about here and here. The y-axis now is not going to be the dollar amount of profit I make, but rather the return on investment. So on the upper side, we have positive return on investment, and on the lower side, we have negative return on investment. So let's look at them one by one. So for the call option, we're looking at this graph here. It looks pretty much the same as before. We see that we break even or get a 0% return on investment when the price of the stock is the strike price plus however much we paid to secure the option, which was $18. So at $218 is where the call option breaks even. If the price is higher than that, then we get a positive return. If the price is lower than that, we get a negative return. And that maxes out at the bottom at negative 100%. Because in the worst case scenario, we don't exercise the option at all. And we just end up losing all $18 we invested, which is essentially a negative 100% return. You lost all of your money from the investment. Now let's look at the stock. The stock is also linear here. We break even if the price of the stock is just staying constant at 176 in the future. We have a positive return if the price is above that and we have a negative return if the price is below that. A lot easier to understand. And now to understand why people consider options so risky, we only need to look at the intersection point here. So here is where the stock strategy and the call option strategy have the exact same return on investment. If the price of the stock increases a little bit from there, the call option is going to give us massive returns compared to the stock option. We see that the growth of this call option line is a lot higher. And so that is the upside of call options versus just buying the underlying stock. Our return on investment actually skyrockets up versus just buying the stock. But as you probably saw coming, there is a flip side to that story, which is that if the stock price goes down a little bit from that equilibrium point, we actually end up getting a more and more and more negative return much, much quicker than we would with just buying and selling the stock by itself. Because this line is so steep, that works in our favor if the price goes up, and that works very much against us if the price goes down. Another way to tell the same story that's interesting is that if I'm gonna get a negative 100% return, from buying and selling the stock, the only way that's possible is if the stock price goes to near zero, which is very, very unlikely. But it's actually very easy to get a negative 100% return by buying a call option, because all that needs to happen is the stock price needs to be below $200. And given that when we bought the call option in the first place, it was $176, it really doesn't seem that unlikely. It seems very possible. And that, folks, is why options are so risky. When I buy the stock, that is also risky. Of course, anything you do in the stock market inherently involves risk. But when I buy the stock, my hope is that the stock price goes up, but if it goes down by a little bit, I am losing money, but not a lot. When I buy a call option, essentially what I'm doing is making a bet on the value of that stock at some point in the future being above a certain dollar amount. And if my bet is wrong, if it's below that dollar amount, if it's below the strike price, my investment is actually completely wasted. I go to negative 100%. So while you could think about just anything in the stock market being betting, options are another level to that because it's basically saying that I am betting that in some period in the future, this price of a certain stock is going to be above a value versus when you just buy the stock, you're not making any such bets built into your return on investment. 
And so that's why folks, we really, really need to understand options before we can even start thinking about building models to try and make money off of them. Now, the only last thing I would say in this video is, uh, let's go back to this bottom here, which describe what a call option actually is. Let's think a little bit about how the price of this option or the premium you pay for this option changes. If these two factors about the option change, the expiration date and the strike price. So let's say instead of six months here, I said it was gonna be 12 months. Would you expect the price or the premium of the option to go up? Would you expect it to go down or would you expect it to stay the same? Well, if I have 12 months in which I can exercise my option instead of just six months, that gives me as the buyer of this option a lot more flexibility because I might choose to exercise it in the seventh month, which was not an option when the period was just six months. And so I'm going to have to pay more for that privilege. And so the premium is going to go up if the expiration date gets further and further into the future. Now, the other factor here, the strike price here was 200. Let's say instead the strike price was 180. Would you expect that to make the premium go up, go down, or stay the same? Well, let's kind of logic our way through this. So I'm saying that instead of being able to buy Tesla stock at 200 in the future, I'm able to buy it for even cheaper. I'm able to buy it for $180. That only works in my advantage as the buyer of this call option, which is going to cause the premium I need to pay to go up in this case. So now if the strike price goes down, the premium is going to go up. So that was actually a bit of a teaser for the next video in this series where we're going to continue looking at call options, but instead of looking at them theoretically, now that we understand them theoretically and understand the risks and rewards versus just buying and selling the stock, we're gonna be looking at actual data for all the tickers in the S&P 500 and look at how the volatility of the purchase prices of call options changes with various factors, like the expiration date, like the strike price, like based on the actual underlying value of the asset itself, like in this case it was 176. How does that correlate with the price you would buy the call option for? So in this video, the goal was just to understand call options and understand the pros and cons versus just buying the underlying stock. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see all you wonderful, wonderful people next time.